Welcome to Coffee with a Flat Earther. There's a lot of animosity between ballers and flat earthers. I hope to reduce this with some friendly conversations. Today, I'm talking with Allie B. Hello, Allie. Yeah. How are you doing? Hey, what what is it? I'll call you. Shall I just call you Mac? Oh, you or? can you can call me Tune. Uh, it's uh, MC Tune, Tune yeah. like MC Hammer. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm not, yeah. I'm not Scottish. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, so what about your name, Ali B? You know, when when uh, when I just saw it written in chat, I didn't know. Uh, you know, to an American, that's a that's a not a guy's name. Right. Well, in in Scottish, in in Scottish, we. Like um, uh, like the name Alistair, Alistair, yeah, and Alan. You can shorten that down to uh, Ali. But the story behind why I call myself Ali is because a very good friend of mine. I used to go fishing and you know go get up to uh, other things out in the countryside, shall we say? And um, he actually he, he'd call he was only person that would call me Ali. He was like, oh, Ali, how you doing? You know, he was older. He was he's about seven years older than me, and uh, he died of uh, cancer. So about well, that was about yeah about forty years ago now. He died of cancer, so I decided just for a tribute to him, I just call him. And, and my name's Alan Beck, so the B is just as in B, but I thought I'd just put two E's after it and just call myself Ali, just to yeah. Just like commemorate my my friend uh, life on this planet, if you want to call it a planet. Oh, that's, that's nice. So, I like that. Yeah, that was it. So, and uh, you're from Scotland, but you're in Denmark. Yeah. What, uh, what do you do there? Uh, well, I do. I'm I'm self-employed. I uh, do a bit. Um, uh, what do you call it? La- uh, landscaping during the summer. And I do a bit of driving during the the winter, but we have we have a good system over here where uh, you pay union fees. And for example, my my uh, uh, landscaping, you know, we can't really do it in the winter, so we have a break for two two months. So the union actually pays our wages and offers. You know, I could go on a course, different uh, types of courses, uh, free. You know, for yeah, just for um, yeah, anything if I if I want to upgrade my skills or anything like that. So, but I just I, I'm just choosing to. I've just moved house, so I've got a lot of work to uh, work to do. So, I usually spend the winter off a couple of months at winter. I don't do anything, then just work the summer. You know, earn my money during the summer, and just have the the winter to recover from work. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, yeah, you do it. So. So uh, you got some uh, you got some coffee there. I have indeed, yes. You did say it was for coffee in a chat, so I thought, well, I better get some coffee. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> or uh, our tea would be fine too, I suppose, if uh, if you, if somebody were to need some tea instead. Um, <clears throat> so how long how long have you been uh, looking at um, you know flat Earth and uh, thinking about it? Uh, that's approximately five years now. Yeah, about five years. Okay, and and so what was the thing that like made you that kind of push you over the edge and made you think, yeah, I think it is flat at least initially. Well, what? what uh, yeah, well, if I go back a, a, about three three years before that, I started looking into uh, conspiracies. You know, the usual, the usual ones, and then then I, because I do like to uh, read quite a bit, and I just. I just seem to keep finding, uh, uh, you know, I, I just keep finding thing, finding out things that I didn't, I didn't know about, and I thought, well, that's strange, and it got stranger. Then you find out about, you know, I've always known politicians, you know, they can be corrupted, you know, everybody has to kind of accept that. And so one day I was sat, and I think it was a, there was a video with a guy called Math Powerland, and and it might have been Eric one of Eric Dubé's uh, videos, I'm not sure. But I decided uh, it was the photo or painting and I was looking at it and I, I literally just burst out laughing. So I went to look into this math Powerland or whatever and it just went from there. Just went from there. I just, I just found it really funny. I thought, oh God, what have they been up to now? Oh, <laughs> And then, yeah, well, that was that. So that, that was actually how I got into it. Probably an Eric Dubé, but 
uh, looking into uh, the math pile and the photo, the photographs. And that was the first thing, because I was a, I was a space geek <laughs> when I was younger. You know, I was I was really interested in space and the planets and everything like that. Hmm. You know. So it was a, a photograph of of something that that. Well, the Earth was it. It was the Earth. He said photo or painting, and he, and he began to show all these, um, all these uh, photographs, saying, "Is it a photo or painting?" And you go photo, painting, painting, and and that kind of thing. Oh, went, oh let me have so a look you can't at this. Tell the difference. That was the point. That was it, and then so I went to look at it, and sure enough, all these pictures were composite. All these pictures that I used to imagine when I was younger, was you know, and you know, I was, I was like, even to imagine that I was out in space next to these huge planets, and and imagining to feel the pull of gravity and stuff. I used to uh, uh, fantasize about that when I was a kid, and it, it was, it was. I was in awe. If you've ever stood and looked at a beautiful, uh, whatever, a, a structure, you were just, wow, how did, that kind of thing. That's how I used to get when I was younger, when I used to think about planets and galaxies. And I just, I just soaked it all in, you know? Hmm. So. so, all right. Well, you mentioned um, conspiracies. So I have a list. Uh, I'm going to go down and, and ask you. Just give me a yes, no, or maybe. You don't have to okay, yep. anything, all right? So yep. just for That's fun cool. here. So yep. uh, the FDA allows Big Pharma to get away with pushing bad medicine. Yep, 100%. Fluoride is put in water to make people dumb. Uh, it's up for debate. Uh, people have figured out free energy, but are keeping it a secret. Yeah, I can, I can believe that, yeah. Dinosaurs never existed. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, yeah. I'm 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 in between with that one at the moment. I, I've not really looked into it much, but what I have looked in, it's it just sounds like waffle. So, but yeah, may, uh, I may be I may be on that one. Okay, Hitler did not die at the end of World War II, but he moved to Venezuela or somewhere else. Uh, I think I think he I think he he killed himself. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think I think he did do what he was said he, he done, and his body got burned. His bodyguard burned his body. I think. Him All right. And Eva Braun. Uh nine eleven was an inside job. Uh, uh, I, I believe it was uh, it was allowed to happen. That's that's about as far as I'll go with that. It was allowed okay. to happen. Uh, the moon landings were faked. Ah, well, you know, I'd, I believe in the moon, uh, moon landing, so no, I don't believe that at all. All right, Sandy Hook shootings were faked. Uh, uh, is that who knows? maybe as little Who, who knows? I, I can't, yeah, it's like a who knows. I looked into that as well, but as I say, you know, it's I'm quite critical with the information I get, so I, I would say, I would say I don't know. I don't, uh, no, I can't say that. I, I need to give an answer. Um, maybe. I think it's about maybe. the best answer. Yeah, that maybe. Works. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Chemtrails to, are... Yeah. What's that? No, uh, but more to... Uh, 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 I'll <laughs> say maybe. I'll stick with maybe. It's a hard one with me, that one. So maybe. Yeah. So. Chemtrails are real and used for energy or to harm people. Uh, no. Some people are paid by shady organizations to support the round earth. Yep. Uh, Queen Elizabeth is a shape-shifting lizard person. <laughs> no. 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 All right. <laughs> uh, other than we can see too far, what is your favorite or best flat earth observation? Oh, just just like uh, oh, oh, best flat earth observation would be well, I haven't observed anything, I've only seen what I've seen where people taking photographs of the uh, thing. So when I walk about, it's not like uh, you, you know, so that, that's probably one is a. Uh, uh, photographs or film of uh, uh, the horizon, but you, you said apart from that. So yeah, apart from that, yeah. Well, there isn't any. I don't think. 
I don't think okay. you can tell by the sun or the stars or anything. So. All right. Um, what is uh, what do you think is the worst flat Earth claim? Something that's probably not true. Crepuscular rays. Yeah, definitely. To, uh, but not the parallel stuff, right? Because it's not parallel, and I'm going to make a video why it's not. But when they say it's just up there and and they use crepuscular rays as proof, that's nonsense. Absolute nonsense. You can see the same thing underwater. And it's the same. It looks as if the source is coming from the water and they come out the same way. So you're just seeing the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, what is the worst spherical earth or ball earth claim? Something that's not true. Oh, the worst one. Oh, well, I would say it's going to be ships over the horizon. I suppose, because that's, uh, that's, that was the off limits part for for my first question there on that. Um, uh, all right, and what what do you think is the most convincing or the best spherical Earth argument? Um, right, and it'll only be through ignorance and not being able to check it. But the the um, uh, the star trails, yeah, in the southern hemisphere. Well, just around you. You can look at the north. Oh well, see that. That's the thing because I haven't really, I haven't really looked. Uh, you know, went really in depth or even contemplated that because uh, it's such a hard thing to prove to see the two at the same time. And I know there's been some photographs, but but that's my that that would say that that would be the one that uh, or the idea that the, of the two poles being there and you see the star trails. As that that would I would think is about their best one. Yeah. So yeah, you you have a little different um, take on on the Earth. You you think that we are in space and not under a dome, and that there are satellites. And can you ex explain that a little more so that we can understand that? All right. I believe. Well, I look at it this way. We know we know uh, with science that hydrogen and helium goes up, right? And and uh, space is not a vacuum. It's a low pressure system. So I'm just thinking, and, and it's it's cold up there, or it's really, it's, it's nearly, you know, uh, absolute zero, just off it anyway, or, or so they say, it's, it's pretty close to absolute zero. And when gases uh, freeze, or, or they get put under certain temperatures, the, 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 uh, the, the molecules won't be as, vibrant shall we say because we know everything vibrates but they won't be vibrate so i always think that they're all huddled together you know that oh try to keep warm which makes for a uh, some kind of i don't know some kind of gaseous uh, not liquid as such but something bordering in between gas and liquid that can support certain uh, craft up there Oh, so that they're in they're in this some sort of viscous. That's um, it, exactly thing, that's it. Something like okay. that, but not not like water or anything like that, but more of a a, a, a near absolute freezing uh, gas because I, I don't think helium freezes, and I'm not sure about high. Uh, I don't think. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure about hydrogen either. But. Yeah, helium at at very low temperatures um, has. It, it turns to water or not water it turns to liquid but it's not like regular liquid there's very different properties of liquid helium yeah yeah okay all right so you probably uh, don't have any evidence of this it's just conjecture um, that's a theory it's a hypothesis yeah, okay. so it's just a theory it's just how i how, how I'm, I'm trying to you know it, it, i think it's a bit stupid I think it's just a bit stupid to block out the. Oh, hang on, I've got someone coming. Right, one second. Oh, it's, uh, this is ridiculous. I, I never get any visitors. You know, I'm out in the countryside here. I usually never get any visitors, and fucking <laughs> when I'm trying to do something. Right, what 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 was the last question? Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> we were talking about um, the um, high. Uh, Liquid helium. Oh, the atmosphere. What I thought that. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I was trying to say because I think uh, uh, you know only the only way to realise we can't just cut it off. It we can't just cut it off 
uh, at the top of the atmosphere and say, that's it, we're on a dome, space doesn't exist. I, I hate that because it's not... You know, you have to use a bit of imagination or some kind of... You have to have a, a, a theory for... Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not into this just going saying, well, that's rubbish and space is fake and all that kind of stuff and then walking away. So I like to think, try to work out actually, well, you know, if it is the way I think it is, how's the satellites moving and stuff like that, so... So, is what do you think the sun and moon are? Well, the moon's a well, the moon's a solid object. The sun, the sun. I, I, you know, I just uh, I don't get that how they they say helium. It's helium turns into hydrogen at a certain temperature. The other way around, like I that. think. Oh, is it hydrogen and helium? Is it? Yeah. All right. Okay. Because I was thinking. You know, if you look at sun, if you look at uh, sunlight, for an example, it's the sun that is the heat. The heat doesn't travel uh, th through the uh, through space or the atmosphere or whatever. It's only when the sunlight interacts with a surface that it agitates and uh, maybe agitates the electrons or whatever, which produces a bit of heat. So you don't. I mean, it's the air. The air doesn't warm up. The, the air only warms up because it, the the sunlight is interacting with the ground and the the, uh, the heat rises, same as the skin. You know, you can't feel the heat of the sun, if you know what I mean. It's 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 your skin interacting with with uh, the sunlight, which I don't believe is warm. So, otherwise, okay. otherwise, there would be no snow in the mountains. And people say, oh, but, you know, it's colder up there, there's less molecules. Well, uh, the, there's... Um, as I've just explained, I believe that it's the sun's interaction with surfaces, not the atmosphere. It's the surface that it, that it works with. So in that, following on from that, that means uh, the snow would melt because it's the sunlight's interacting with snow or the water or whatever. That's that, that will uh, heat up uh, the water because I don't believe it heat, heats up the atmosphere. You know, sun only heats surfaces or interacts with a surface which then produces the heat. So it's not the sun. Personally, myself, it's not the sun. Okay. So, yeah, I think the 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 kind of the standard claim is that it uh, it does interact with the air, but not much because it's not as solid. Um, but then also the reason why it, it uh, when it's where it's cold in the north or south is it hits at a different angle and it goes through more atmosphere and the atmosphere does absorb some. But that's, you know, that's fine. That's the... Uh, uh, yeah, I know that. Yeah, I know, claim, yeah. yeah, I know that, but I don't. I don't. I don't go with that. I don't go yeah. with that. Okay. Okay. Um, so, so you, you're not sure if the sun is a solid object or not. Oh, I, I don't mean it's illusory. I don't mean it. You know, it's not a thing. It, 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 it's there. You know, we can see it. But I don't believe it's it's what they say. As I don't, I, you know, I, I'm looking up and I can see see there's something there. Right? There's a source of light there. So there has to be something there because nothing can't produce light, if you know what I mean. So it's kind of stupid uh, to think that something you can see light coming from doesn't exist. Oh. Yeah, so you're not you're not thinking it's a projection or <laughs> no. some sort of a hologram. No, not me. No, no. Okay. Yeah, those. That one is is I think kind of frustrating because it it uh, I think it's a little more of the silly claims. Yeah. So, all right. So, if if the sun and uh, and the moon are, um, you know, an object that you can at least pinpoint its location. Yeah. Um, I've seen people talking about when we when they say that the sun sets, that they just say it's perspective. That because you know, if you look up, you see the ceiling, and as it goes away from you, it appears lower, right? Um, yeah. And and then that's how the sun appears to set. So, but um, this is all, this is just perspective and there's formulas and there's ways to figure these out. Uh, what, you know, and how far up it is, right? So here's the distance across the ground, here's the height. And then the angle from from here yeah. up to where the thing appears, we can calculate and 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 it's, you know, pretty basic math you just need to do a it's a right triangle and you need to solve the triangle and you use 
Uh, you have the distance across the Earth, you have the angle being 90 degrees, and you have the elevation of whatever the sun elevation is. So you can do the math on that, and you can find out that uh, outside of going to Antarctica, if you're at the southern tip of South America, on the day of the, the solstice, the southern solstice, that's when the sun would be farthest away from the southern tip of South America. Okay. And in the middle of the night, it'll be somewhere near the western edge of Australia. That's about seven. Then if you take the elevation of whatever you want, people have different numbers, 3,000 miles is pretty common. You can use 1,000 or 5,000. It doesn't matter much. You can calculate the angle. Uh, I did the math. If you calculate the angle at, uh, or calculate for the sun being 3,000 miles high, the angular elevation in the middle of the night is nine and a half degrees for the, where the sun would be if it's 3,000 miles high. Right, okay. So I looked at that and I thought, well, because this, this was early when, when, when I first saw the claim saying it's perspective, oh, well, we can do the math. And I said, well, how is it that nine and a half degrees at the most, um, or sorry, at the least, they're, they're, everywhere else has more. Um, how does the sun appear to set if if you know if it's an object right if if you go for some sort of a dome thing projection then it's a whole different you know yeah you no, i'm not going there so we don't need to talk about that yeah <laughs> so so d does that uh is that something that that might give you something to think about oh well it's it's like well, well do you know um no no not really because the fact is <clears throat> They've done them. Uh, they've done ma uh, uh, mathematics where it could be basically uh, any any height. I, I think three thousand miles is a wee bit too close. Uh, that I'm thinking. I think it's a lot. It's a lot further uh, than three thousand uh, three thousand miles away. But uh, regarding the sun, uh, the sun going away into the distance and uh, not changing its angular size. I believe that's like when it, when it gets down to a certain degrees in the you know uh, towards the horizon, it, you can't really take true measurements off of that, and they don't do that with stars as well. I think it's under twenty degrees or twenty five degrees, you know, off the above the horizon, because yeah. there's too much aberration, there's too much interference, which I can't really understand because it's not really coming through any more uh, atmosphere, is it really? <laughs> so. Yeah, when it's when it's low, it doesn't either either model. It doesn't matter, you know. The atmosphere only goes up, you know, a few miles. Yeah, so that's what um, I'm saying. So, but even did, astronomers yeah. astronomers won't it won't even uh, uh, touch it below. As I say, I I, I I need to check that out. It's that long ago since I since I looked at it. It's, it's about fifteen or twenty degrees above the horizon. They they won't even look at it because there's there's too much uh, too many aberrations. So you can't really get a good optical, and remember they're using optics as well, you know. So it's not, it's you know, if we really want to be, uh, what do you call it, stringent with the logic, I mean, an observation is not proof. So yeah, an observation is just observation. Nothing's proof in in yeah. in science. But it's not evidence. Have, that must be. Yeah, yeah, it's evidence. And yeah, you have a collection of evidence, and in the end, you look at the evidence on one side and the evidence on the other side, and you decide, well, which one has evidence and which one doesn't. And which one has the, in, in fact, in science, it's it's also really big about which one's been disproven the most um, instead of which has been proven the most. Yeah. So so the angular height of the sun in, in Minnesota, where I'm at, and not too much different in Denmark, um, in the middle of the summer can cannot be any lower than 25 degrees. So again, the a sunset no, I, I don't I don't understand that because I mean we know for a fact when we're looking at a horizon things that go off in the distance they get closer and closer to the horizon even though they aren't. you understand So I, I don't think uh, we can really uh, you could say that because you're you're you'd be, saying that you're doing that through mathematics yeah which yeah. the mathematics you'll be using was mathematics that was used to prove and uh, not prove but mathematics that have the assumption that we're on a ball 
So, I mean, so you can design mathematics to any way. You know, I could make a mathemat, I could throw a ball, make a make up my own mathematics for that and describe that ball uh, moving uh, through the air kind of thing. I could make up a, you know, if I was capable of doing, <laughs> you know, yeah. doing maths, I'm sure I could. So, but the, the mathematics weren't to find out the shape or anything that. It was just to really to, uh, prove it, if you know what I mean. Well, that's well, how I'm I look using, at it anyway. I'm not using any specific ball mathematics. I'm just saying um, it's a triangle, right? Mm -hmm. and, and actually assuming that, right? if it's a flat side here, you got a straight side here, and there's a 90-degree angle. Um, so yeah, but the ball's spherical kind of thing. So your 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 line would actually, if you were standing there and you came round like that, three thousand miles. What's that? That's like five no. degrees. Uh, no, that's like fifty degrees of a drop. Yeah, I'm I'm assuming flat. So you're so you're so you're uh, so the line would be, uh, you know, the line that you would draw could never be like that. It would have to, if you know, what I mean, if you're going to take a proper, so you'd have to do it in a spherical, and you couldn't have that as ninety degrees because if you had that as ninety degrees, that there would be closer to that point than down here, would it not? Can yeah, but I'm I'm not. I'm not assuming that that it's on a a sphere. I'm assuming it's on on a on a flat plane. I'm using the the flat Earth claims. All right, okay. Testing, seeing well, that if that's the claim, if 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 it's saying that the, it's flat and that it's three thousand miles up, and that it doesn't matter what map you choose, AE or you know, there's a, a few different maps. There's, there's always a maximum distance that you can go, right? You can't go any more than 24,000 miles away, right? Um, and I've not seen anybody make any claims other than, than you know, that the Earth's that much bigger. So, you know, you, you, you take it flat. You, you draw that line straight across. You draw that line straight up, and you measure the angle. That's all it is. So there's no... There's no ball uh, assumption. It's a flat assumption. Oh, right. Yeah, no, you're talking flat. There's no sorry. fancy math. It's it's just a triangle. So there's nothing that's been, you know, contrived to prove anything other than it's just a simple, you know, kind of eighth grade uh, math. Well, I, I misunderstood you, you know. there. I misunderstood. Yeah, I, yeah. I didn't realize you were talking about it. My apologies. Uh, I didn't realize you were talking about the plane there. So. Yeah. So anyway, so I, it's just, it's something I did to, to test the claim and I found, well, I, I, I don't know how the sun could set. There's no phenomenon that I've identified that makes sense. Uh, refraction doesn't do it. Um, uh, you know, I've seen people claim diffraction, which, which is not really sensible. Um, perspective. Well, this is perspective. You know, we can calculate what things look like as they get farther away. This is just a known thing. Yeah, but so, you have to know the size of that object first. So, no, um, th this is apart from the size. I'm not saying the angular size, right? Like, we see no matter where we see the sun to be about thirty arc minutes wide. I'm not. I don't care about that for this particular yeah. thing. I'm just saying where it will be. So the center of the sun will be at any particular location, right? And, and so if you're like, if you're at, uh, on a road and looking at, and you've got the phone poles up over your head and as they go away, they go down and, and we can say, well, the phone pole is 30 feet high and it's one mile away. And we can calculate the angle above, uh, level that you'll see it. Or you can calculate if, you know, a little more math, you can calculate the angle above the road that you'll, that it'll appear to you. So, um, all that's been taken into account. There's not, it's not much to think about, not much to add in. And so, and I saw, I thought, I don't see a way that the sun could set. Right. Okay. So, all right. Um, uh, so is there anything, uh, anything that you like a lot, something that really keeps you thinking, yeah, I think it's flat. Um, yeah, uh, yep. An attitude indicator in an aeroplane. Oh yeah. The I don't know. Really a guy I actually, I actually done a great interview there. I had him on my channel. I was debating a guy called oh, I'm not even going to name him. Actually, debating him on the, the non sequitur, and yep. there, there was a 
<laughs> I got a, a few days later, I got an email about it, and I got this guy. He he's actually a technician, and he stripped them down, build them up, and stuff like that. So he was kind of not pulling his hair out, but he was kind of yeah. So he, he reached out to me. He says, "Ali," he says, "I was listening to you and uh, the other guy on the non sequitur, and I was just shaking my head." He said, because there was a few misconceptions, so I wanted to uh, sort them out. He said, would you be interested on having some, uh, if I'd done a live demonstration on it? I said, of course. I said, you're more than welcome. Come on on. And he told me exactly, you know, the, how it works about the gimbal, pendulous veins. Uh, yeah, I, I, learned, I learned a little bit. My technical understanding is as is, uh, is, is good as his now, because he's told me now. So how? So I, 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 all I need to do is just repeat what he says. But as I say, the the thing is with that, I just hear people say about gravity. But but that's my best one. We don't need to go into that yet. But uh, yeah, my best one's attitude indicators, and the reason is it's a mechanical device that we've built, designed, manufactured to show when an airplane is not flying level, or when it goes when it moves position off the level that it was when the gyroscope was calibrated uh, on the on the runway or just when they park up. They usually fire them up five minutes before the, they take off. So so that, that's my thing. That's my main thing there. There's, a, there's an instrument that's just specifically designed and the only way it can be debunked is if they say it's gravity. That's the only argument they've got is gravity, and that just you know. So you you don't uh, you don't take gravity to be real. Um. <clears throat> no, no. I do, well, I don't take it as a force, right? They've they've mentioned that, like when when things fall, they've decided that that's a, that that that's a thing called gravity. It's caused by the mass. It's caused by the mass of the Earth, and no proof for it. So, you don't, no, you don't, I don't like the Cavendish I don't think experiment? Heard, heard about it, but that, that could be anything. I was just wondering why Why don't do it with wooden. I, I find it very interesting because even lead can be uh, can hold a static charge. It can also be magnetised slightly, but it can be magnetised. And for to believe that that is the only experiment that they've got uh, to prove that, that was like 200 odd years ago that that experiment was done. And there well, they, even... they redo that all the time. Um, you can purchase uh, devices and they have them in universities all over that are the same. They're just smaller. Yeah. And they do also give different results and, uh, and they're totally not done in the same way as what Cavendish done. It. They're not yeah, done. Cavendish, they're Cavendish done had a, strange... He had a Go much on. larger, uh, set up then you can just put into a classroom but uh, they do they do um occasionally redo a large scale one and when they do it they they uh they they eliminate the electrostatic charge by by grounding everything to the same ground so that there's no static they don't want you don't want that no it's um, only, yep. yeah and and I've not heard that lead can hold magnetism. Um, oh, it does. They've done well, all the, the. Sorry. They can, you know, when when the electricity is passing through it, it can generate a field. But when there's not um, uh, a current running through it, it's it's non magnetic. Yeah, that's it. But I, but I, it, it can be magnetized. They've done all these experiments. Look, a bit of ivory. They can magnetize ivory. And it's all about heat, you know, when you heat it up and uh, you aim at a, a magnetic north and, you, and when it cools down, it takes on the magnet. They've done all this in the 1700s, all these experiments in the 1700s and stuff like that. I, everything, they tested everything. They went totally mad on absolutely everything, trying to magnetise everything. And that was one of the things that they were, they were successful, all, albeit small, but small it doesn't matter then. If it can hold it, it's, it's not that that anomaly is still there. So, and plus the you know like the atmosphere can hold a charge. There's, there's lots of 
Look, when I see these, when I see these carbon dish experiments and see them done in the classroom, are you joking? That whole that whole building surrounded with electricity. The whole building, and we know when electricity goes through a wire, it creates a it'll create a field, whatever. If you know what I mean. So it's not like a free of uh, electrical. You're actually inside, and plus, we're inside a gravitational field. So it's like trying to weigh, trying to weigh a liter what a liter of water under the water. Yeah. Uh, um, unless sort of unless you the... can push, unless you can uh, push, but then you're causing the force, and you would have to subtract the force that you pushed it up at. Then you would have to measure inertia. You know, if 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 you're in the water, it's like it's impossible. But we are we're inside a a magnetic field or a gravitational field or whatever. We're in we're in the middle of it. So it just seems a bit absurd to me not to take that into consideration, kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Um. So what if it were in a vacuum and inside a Faraday cage and being perpendicular to the pull of of the Earth's gravity, are there other things that you might? Oh well, I would have to look at that. Yeah, I would. I would have to if 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 that experiment was done, then I would have to. I would have to look uh, look into it, check it for myself, see. But it just seems right now. They're doing an exper. They're doing the exact same exper- experiment. I believe if you're going to falsify. Uh, uh, what do you call it? A hypothesis or a theory or whatever. If you're going to, yeah. if you're going to falsify that, you have to try and prove it wrong. And the only way is to change the experiment to find if you can get the same results with a different experiment. Then that's falsifying it. It's not like repeating it or you know kind of thing. As you take another experiment designed to do it, and if you can't do that well, you're doing one experiment. One way of experiment, you should be able to test it like multiple, I believe anyway, multiple times. So, okay. I believe there should be look- another experiment uh, designed. That's what I would believe w- would be to falsify an experiment. A, a result or whatever is to not use, there's no point using the same ex- experiment to falsify it if it's already given you positive readings. Kind of thing. Yeah, repeating an experiment makes it repeatable and shows yeah, that it's not a fluke. Uh, yeah, yeah, I understand you. Yeah. And you falsify, you false hypothesis. Um, but yeah, okay, so... Um, uh, oh, yeah. My coffee is getting cold. It's it's uh, 30 below zero. Uh, <laughs> Well, look, I've got, I've got a I've got an oven right next to me, and I've got my cup oh. and my can sat in my oven here. If you see it, yeah, that's it. Oh yeah, that's nice. That's my. Yeah, I don't have that. <clears throat> I have uh, I have cold coffee and cold feet, and uh, <laughs> and uh, not much snow outside, but it's it's cold. So yeah. Um. So what? Uh, what, if anything, would you like to say to to um, the baller crowd? Um, just keep what you keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. That's, that's the best thing. Keep doing because, as I say, you know, the more things that they come up with, the more things that they come up with, and actually, do you know, <laughs> I, I just kind of laugh because they put flat earth in their title switch. I mean, they're in. They've just the fact that they've come on the scene and been trying to debunk it, right, is the fact that they're promoting it as well. So I, I kind of find it ironic when they're trying to stop. Uh, oh, uh, when they're trying to stop, uh, stop it. They're actually advertising it, you know. And as I think it was, what was his name? Oh, it's like Oscar Wilde said, you know, even bad publicity is publicity. You know what I mean? Still promoting it, and also. And also, I would like to say just um, uh, where regarding them, just don't get so triggered about it, and stop and stop calling people retards. If you think that, uh, and I hope they're not teaching their children this either, their attitude just because someone believes something different, you're going to call them a retard. Now, if you believe they're a retard, I think it's rather immoral to be going about 
uh, taking the mickey out of people that are retarded. It's like walking up and it's like going into the street. You know, they believe we're retarded, right? So then they, my, my, my thing, how I think it is, so they think it's okay uh, to pick and ridicule uh, people uh, that are retarded. It just shows the kind of character, that's all. I just say, I wish they would stop saying that because they're showing themselves to be like uh, whatever, and flat earthers as well. I want to say to flat earthers, stop mentioning fake space and stuff like that and NASA's fake and the ISS is fake because of the fact is it doesn't help because if you want to introduce it to the mainstream or if they want to introduce it to the mainstream, they're going to have to stop saying that because it's ridiculous. It's just... It's as if it's 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 yeah they're just opening up uh, open up like people like myself that are a wee bit more uh, willing to accept some of its lies and some of its truth you know we can't we can't really tell but just to just to poo poo that just because someone on YouTube had a video and said look there's bouncy strings and stuff like that it's fucking ridiculous oh oh god man. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do that again. I, I believe it's. I believe it's. Uh, I believe it's ridiculous. Uh, a ridiculous claim. And and the thing is, also that you know we flat earthers fly the flag of critical thinking. Yeah, they'll take videos as evidence. They'll take images as evidence and stuff like that. If, it, if someone presents you with an image, you can't say whether you can't say it's true or it's false unless that person says, hey, by the way, this is a composite, this is false, but they are willing to uh, uh, just, uh, you know, like uh, jump in, which is totally against critical thinking and logical thinking. It's, uh, well, to me anyway, that's how I see it. I think it's stupid how the, how, how the yeah, I, I just find it strange. That's, that's what I would say to uh, that lot. The ones that hmm. do that about NASA. Yeah, you got to be like consistent. <clears throat> yeah, well, exactly. You know, and you're just opening up yourself to more, more ridicule, and you just end up looking stupid. If you know, if if people are going to, uh, you know, uh, say that they're critical thinkers, well, they start start better, you know, acting like critical thinkers, and stop poo pooing things out of the way and have, like, why we're having this discussion here today, like my, uh, like myself. You believe there's too much animosity and there's too much, uh, you know, shouting and bawling and swearing and ridiculing from both sides. And I'm I'm absolutely I'm absolutely uh, the same. I'm more than willing to enter into a, you know, a discussion. And I think people yeah. should be more doing it. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I I, I don't like at all when when uh, people say, and end ending any word with tart, I think is is offensive. To the person you're talking to, but but I think it's it's more about you know there are people that are mentally handicapped and physically handicapped, and we don't need to to bring them into it and use use an insult. Um, yeah, you like that's that to apply to somebody else because they don't think the same as you. That's not that's not the way to move forward, and that's just not right. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm like that myself, but I, you know what I have to, but I've 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 changed. I mean, like in five years, I really have changed. I used to get triggered. I never really I, when I started off, I was really really polite in the chats. You know, you'd be chatting away and stuff like that, and I was always polite because I said I'm not going to go that. But then I think you get dragged uh, dragged into this. I, I don't know what it is. Uh, uh, dragged in, uh, dragged into that kind of pattern that you started using you started using it kind of thing and i was i admit i was uh, i fell into that trap uh, for a while maybe even a year or maybe two years or whatever it was because i was so passionate about how we were you know we'd been lied to or our kids were getting educated uh, wrong you know wrong information wrong science you know they're still teaching things in science uh, in science classes today that's not true so that was that was my kind of uh, my kind of uh, yeah, my kind of look on it, kind of thing. So. Okay. Thank you. We're getting close to the end here. So, uh, who is your favorite flat earther? <laughs> you my mate, my mate, Chris F. E. Jackson. 
he's okay. an electronics engineer. He doesn't do a lot of videos, but he's he's my mate. He's my favourite flat earther. The rest of them are, uh, well, you know, the last, uh, uh, most of the vocal ones, I would say, I hope you're going to keep this in because I love doing this. Uh, the, uh, the Most of the, because I hope, yeah, but I hope people start, you know, realising, people on uh, my side start realising this. There's a lot of them uh, flat earthers that are just in it for the money, the drama, uh, the glory, you know, to the point that they'll hold back information because it wasn't them that came up with it. And I've got a personal experience with that. And I'll talk about it offline if you wish to know. I will <laughs> reveal. I will All reveal right. to you. But as I say, I, I won't be, but I've got, I've, I've got absolute proof and no doubt about it that there's people just doing it for the money and kind yeah. of stuff and, and to keep that propag uh, propagating. And they're after the glory. My goodness, man. There's people out there that want to be the one that debunk oh, yeah. the globe and they will when, they'll hide it, they'll hide information and they will hide information. So proven, well, not, you know, uh, taking away one of the proofs, you know, I've taken away quite a few of the proofs, like crepuscular rays. The minute that came, I was straight on, I'd done a, a hangout and stuff like that and I explained, I says, look, the stupidity of, and it still keeps coming back. You know, not about the parallel lines, but because that's that's nonsense that they come in in parallel lines. There's actually, yeah, it's. I, I, I was I was going to do a demonstration of it uh, in a video or something like that, proving it's yeah. impossible. I mean, okay, well yeah. that that'd be uh that'd be a good thing to to see. I'd like to watch that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think there's there's certainly some uh, flat earthers that are. They like going to conferences and speaking there and being treated like a celebrity. And, and uh, you know, you look at some of these channels that have been around a while and they're not doing anything other than just promoting their next um, their next speaking engagement. That yep. doesn't seem like uh, you care a whole lot about actually trying to do research or produce a model or, you know, what's the map look like? And, you know, there's some issues with whatever map. Can you identify them? No, instead, come see me at my next conference. All right, yeah, that's a little... Exactly. Cool. Yeah. And it's like that in every single conspiracy, uh, con every single conspiracy, there's, they give a little bit of information out and they'll say, well, to watch the rest, you have to be a Patreon. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like do you know, like Spotify, for example, Spotify, you get a free package, right? Or when they first started up, this was, it was like as a business plan kind of thing. You get given something for nothing, but to get upgraded, you have to pay. And that's how Spotify, that was their business model, actually. They were probably one of the first uh, to do that kind of style of, or modern day anyway, that kind of style of model where you get something for nothing, but to get it upgraded, you pay a bit extra. There's loads of flat earthers uh, that do that, but I don't think there's any, I don't think there's any ball earthers that do that, actually. They do charge money. I know there's, they do charge money, but I don't think there's any that, that kind of uh, say join the club or a private thing. They're more honest that way, actually. Now to think of it. <laughs> so. Oh, your sound's gone. There. Oh, there you're back. It. All right. Yeah. You uh, you froze for a little bit. So, oh, yeah, hang on, let me. me. Just I mean, you fro froze as well. Hang on, let me just check. I, I use my telephone as my router. I'm, I, I, I've just... Uh, no, oh, okay. I'll switch it. Yeah, sometimes if I get a message, it kind of messes with it. I'm out in the country. I, I, I've just moved into this house uh, the last uh, week, uh, and I haven't got uh, my internet connection yet, so I just use my phone. Oh, okay. But it's good enough. It only gives two two megabytes or two and a half megabytes or saying, so it's not oh. the highest. It's working. Uh, yeah. um let's see well all right we kind of went through that one so who is your favorite uh baller my favorite ball alpha would be well i well he is a ball alpha but he doesn't really get involved uh, involved much in it but he's my favorite ball alpha would have to be steve mccray <laughs> from the non sequitur show Oh, Steve, yeah. Yep. And well, you have a long history with him, so. 
Yeah, I have a few years. I have a few years. He was kicked. I think he's kicked me uh, he, in the great debate. He he kicked me off, and I thought I thought it was really funny. He kicked me off, and then for the next half an hour, they were having a big argument amongst themselves whether I was right. There was actually someone on there that was agreeing that agreed with what I say, but he never said that I agree with. He he was point. You know, so there was a big discussion about half an hour <laughs> after I left. It was they were, they were actually going back at each other, so nice. Which is quite funny. But Steve's Steve's, I mean, he can be a bit condescending because he looks, you know, I, I think he looks at me as if as a curious object. Is about <laughs> the best way I can put it. <laughs> you know, I mean, he he kind of, uh, I think he's that. Uh, no, I don't know. I think I think he I think he. Like, I think he likes me. He enjoys. He enjoys me. I think that's about. I, I think that's true. It, it's, it's, um, it's different talking to you and lo looking at uh, watching your stuff than than uh, a lot of the other guys that just kind of have the same, same stuff. It's predictable and no different. Yeah. No, well, thanks very much. Uh, I, as I say, if if I see something. That, uh, that that someone's saying, and I'll, I'll, I'll look at it, and I do. I'll, I'll I'll look up the scientific papers, and what what people don't seem to realise, you don't need to, uh, you don't need to need, uh, you don't need to do mathematics or understand mathematics, because they describe it before in words. So the mathematical equation is of absolutely no use to me unless I want to measure something. So if they're saying, you know, for example, they'll describe exactly what the values are what the event that's happening that they're describing why it's happening what forces are at play they, they say it in english so i just read I, I just read the papers as i say the, and then that's what annoys me oh you don't know mathematics or what's your qualifications and i always use i say well look i said Mike, michael faraday was uneducated left school when he was 13. henry huxley or yeah uh, thomas huxley uh, he left school uh, when he was 10. And he was self-taught, so that kind of blows it, you know. To a well, if you believe in evolution and stuff like that, but he wrote uh, uh, Henry Huxley. Uh, he he wrote a lot of books on education and stuff like that. So, and he and he did go about promoting evolution. Uh, but he was uneducated, ten year old, left school. You know, Faraday, yeah. I think yeah. he was thirteen, left school. There, so there's what, what, plenty, what? plenty of famous scientists that didn't. Um didn't go to university and get a, you know, a master's degree or doctorate in something. Exactly. They, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I don't, that's I don't what I think. Uh, that's what I think is good because it's more of an odd guy. See, I think it's like, it, it's more of, uh, and it's not just to uh, make me sound any, any more special, but this is, this is just me. I'm using my logic. I think if you're, if you're restricted, because when you get taught or whatever, you, you're, you're taught a certain thing that's in, in a certain box, right? So you always you always think within that your your uh, deductions of a phenomena will be totally grounded in these mathematics, and if the mathematics can't explain it, you know it, it's not real or whatever. But I believe that people that maybe don't go through so much of the education system, they're a bit more uh, a bit more free thinking. Like a guitarist, I play guitar, right, and you can actually tell someone that's been classically trained to someone that's learned for themselves it's totally different because they're not restricted me oh you can't play that no oh that's that scale i can't deviate from that scale because of this and that and that so it becomes more mechanical the same as people that go to school and the further the longer they're in the education system the more constricted they're, they're thought of. unless of course you go to like a private school, Yale or Cambridge, Oxford, Eton, you know, MIT or places like that, you've got access to, well, we're okay now, but they've had access to some of the greatest library, the biggest libraries in the world with the ancient manuscripts that if you can read Latin and Greek, you can walk in there as a 16-year-old boy and go into the Cambridge library and open up a book. And you'll get access to books that uh, the normal public don't have. Do you think those books are not accessible at all? With with uh, well, no, some of them are anymore. Yep, but it's, some of them are, but some of them are not. Yeah. Some of them are not uh, accessible. It'd be it, it, 
well, personally, I would be foolish to think that every single book, well, for example, everybody knows they've got a library, uh, the vaults at the Vatican, and I'm not talking conspiracy, but they've they, they've got a uh, they've got they've got access where you can actually walk into the no, I don't mean there, but like these schools, you can just actually walk into a library, uh, and get access. And then on the, some of the oldest books, you're not allowed access to them, even in the library. You know, like for Eton, Cambridge, all these uh, private sure. schools kind yeah, of thing. So we all know that. We can accept that. So that's what I'm saying. We're we are actually restricted. The, the, in that sense, information is controlled. Is it I, – I kind of figured for the most part that it's, it's – they old and that they don't put them online for either of it and it's kind of exclusive to us or uh we don't think it'd be worth the money to do it that it you know wouldn't net us any financial benefits so we have to pay money to have somebody do it but it doesn't earn us any in the end so it's it's not financially sensible well, that's what i thought i i never really took and you know i'm not much for conspiracy theories but i never took that they cared about protecting it more than just how's the dollars affect us yeah <laughs> yeah well i mean it's like that they say knowledge is power and that is true that, i mean that's just like a maxim if i have more knowledge about you and uh, uh, about a certain subject than you uh, you do i could quite easily manipulate my knowledge uh, to manipulate you and and I think it's a bit absurd in this uh, time and date to not think there's there's there's, uh, there's there's some nasty characters in certain places of power that have that power. I mean, it's stupid. If uh, I mean, we're told to hate ourselves, or oh, mankind's destroying the planet, but yet well, he's not a bad person because he's got a PhD or he's got a he's a doctor or you understand this this authoritarian or, or this looking up to authority. Or respect and authority, you know. There's bad people in every every walk of life. Now, who's to say? Who's not to say? These people are evil psychopaths. Not all of them, of course. You know, it's not we're saying. I'm saying that everybody's like that. But it just takes one person that has a job as a manager or chief executive or whatever he has, you know, to to force his will if he has the power to do it. And it's absurd to think that these people are for some reason are angels. And it's ridiculous. I'm sure that's called uh, uh, an argument uh, uh, against incredulity or something like that. It's something I can't remember. But it's like just because you can't believe it happens, it's it's uh, it, it can't happen, which is yeah, absurd. That, that's right. Yeah. But we get accused of that. You know, people from our side get accused for that. And on the other side, they're using the exact same. Oh, it can't possibly, the sun can't possibly. Well, they're, they're, I, I don't even bother getting into that. They're, 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 they're uh, uh, doing the same thing as the, the accuser. Other people are doing kind of thing. Can't be possible. Science wouldn't lie to us. Or scientists wouldn't lie to us. It's the same thing. You know, and to yeah, believe, I, you know. I, I think it's it's not just, you know, trusting a scientist. I think it's... Well, there's there's a whole bunch of different things that I understand and things that that make sense and have been explored and all together they all support this. So it's not just I trust one scientist. Though at sometimes you you do wind up there that where you have just a small number of um, experiments or a, you know one experiment and that's why repeatability is important. And uh, um, as an example, when there's new elements that they've discovered. Um, you know, element 118, they've, they've identified uh, in a lab in, I don't remember where, Russia. And then they do it somewhere else and they have to confirm it at another place before they'll, uh, before they'll take that it's a new element. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, oh. but see, see, yeah, but the lights on that, right, a peer review, pay, right, what, what should... Oh, well, we can talk about this if you've got about 10 minutes after we do this. But we, we oh, well, what I was going to say, it's like, <laughs> uh, I will because it's a, a, it's an interesting, I will, we'll carry on now. We'll carry on. I won't sure, get sure. Off, off the point. Now, so. Um, so, uh, anything before we wrap up, uh, you want to say? 
Yeah, yep. I would. I would just say to everybody, you know, treat everybody with respect, even if they have different beliefs than yourself. Just treat them with with respect and stuff like that, and and don't go too hard on uh, people that maybe have uh, different beliefs uh, than yourself. And I apologise for anybody that I've upset. I've called an idiot, which I don't do very often now, but I have done. And uh, yeah, let's keep the dialogue going. Great. Well, thanks. Um, thank you, Ali B, for agreeing to be on Coffee with Flat Earther. If anyone found what he had to say interesting, I will have the link to his uh, channel in the description. Go over and have a look. Um, if you'd like to, if you're a Flat Earther and you'd like to be on Coffee with a Flat Earther, uh, you can send me an email at mctune at mctune.net. And uh, thank you for joining us. Thank <laughs> you.